What's Baxter gonna think when you die in the year because you've been drinking all that stuff? He'll remember me for creating a better world where Aerochrome is available at your local photography retailer. Jason, your doctor came in and literally broke down crying when he looked at your chart the other day. Don't drink that. It's time to put it down. No! Stop, 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 Jason, no! Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, in my ongoing journey to review every film stock in existence, which will probably end in me dying from a mysterious curse 12 days after I finally review Foma Pan, I thought maybe it was time to do a review for Kodak Gold 120, which I wasn't invited to be an early tester for. In case you haven't heard because you've been living under extreme Kodak ignorance, Kodak Gold, a popular 35mm budget-friendly film stock, has made its way back to medium format as a cheaper alternative to Portra 400, or a cheaper alternative to literally any 120 film because that shit's expensive. We heard murmurs for a long time that Kodak would be bringing back a stock that they once held in their inventory, which of course is super exciting because there's always a little bit of wiggle room for that to be interpreted as Aerochrome. But we got Kodak Gold in 120 instead, which is also good. It's not really something I think people are going totally Animal Planet over because I think Gold was always available in 35. Think of it kind of like the person who invented Chili Dogs. They didn't really do anything new, they just put two things that people already love together into one massive ass bomb. Anyway, I was forever committed to 35mm Kodak Gold ever since I shot a roll of it and it came back sexier than Centaur Atom Driver. From there, it was pretty hard for me to even consider using any other film stock as my default option. I was kind of like Mr. Krabs. I made Kodak Gold my entire existence. Gold, 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 gold. So when the news got dropped earlier this year that Kodak Gold would be coming to 120, I nearly blacked out and had to go lay down for a little bit. I'd probably literally die of exhaustion from partying if it ever made its way to large format. But is this new version of Gold just the 35mm version scaled up for a larger negative? Maybe. I have my doubts, but we'll get into all that later. Or I don't know, maybe we won't. Sometimes I forget to cover some topics. Anyway, to test some Gold 120, Again, not as part of the early testing program that I wasn't invited to, but it's fine. I've moved on and I'm in a better place now emotionally. I called up the Keep It Liddy committee, which is just Caleb, and we hit the unforgiving streets of Echo Park in our finest linens. At least I think it was Echo Park. It's wherever they did that Tesla jump video. Knowing that we'd have to climb some hills and get exercise in general, I decided to bring my heavy ass Pentax 6x7 to make my life extra difficult. So first impressions of the new Kodak Gold 120. I like it a lot, but it doesn't really remind me of the Kodak Gold that I foolishly fell in love with for some reason. I don't know what that reason is though. When I think of Kodak Gold in 35, I think of how brown and, well, gold, the tones can be. They act more of like an undertone and they don't slap you straight on. It's just something that you feel inside, like existential dread. Gold 120 seems to be a bit more neutral. Like, it lands somewhere in between Kodak Gold and Portra 400. The color red certainly does pop a lot, and the overall saturation is up quite a bit, which is certainly spanktastic. I have heard that the film bases between 35 and 120 are different somehow. I don't really know if that's true though, much less how that affects color rendering, if it would at all. I also took this shot, which I think is downright nasty, but in a good way. However, you may also be seeing what I'm seeing, which if you are, is probably blurry double vision because I haven't eaten today and I've only chugged a flaming hot Mountain Dew. But this shot definitely has some green flare or smudge or Shrek themed stain, I don't know. A few of my shots actually had this problem and I don't really think it's a light leak because typically those are kind of red orange. That and this green Aurora Borealis shit didn't show up on any other rolls. Uphill. 
can unless you want to go that way. Nah, let's go uphill. Anyway, because we're lame, irrelevant photographers using an outdated medium that barely anyone cares about anymore, we had to lean hard into the old car trope. But believe it or not, I actually really like this shot. I think that the colors really hit, especially this banger McSlammer. So surprise, surprise, I had a roll of Kodak Gold 100 Be good to me. in 120 that I picked up from the folks over at Hidden Light in Flagstaff, Arizona when we did our Route 66 trip. Started in 99. Mm, good year. It's the year Star Wars Episode 1 of Phantom Menace came out. You just have a lot of good trivia, <laughs> trivia knowledge. Yeah. Mostly Star Wars related. It's only Star Wars related. <laughs> I'm kind of stupid in every other camera. <laughs> I was saving the roll for something special because who the f knew that Kodak Gold would be coming back to 120? Certainly not I, because again, I didn't get to test it early, which is fine, it doesn't bother me. I was probably busy doing something totally cooler that day anyway. But then Gold fabulously exploded onto the scene in 120, and this relic became a little less relevant, so I decided to shoot it for a comparison. Here's a side-by-side -side on fresh gold 200 and expired gold 100, which was rated at 80 ISO. We soon found some more old cars and you already know what was going down. We just can't help ourselves sometimes. The heart wants what the heart wants. But yeah, these shots are okay. I kind of wish there wasn't a porta potty looming ominously in the background. Maybe we should have tipped it over to get it out of the shot. So after much thinking, which gave me a headache that still hasn't gone away. I would say that all versions of Kodak Gold are similar, but not exactly the same. This older Gold 100 definitely delivers the warm brown tones that I look for a little bit more. But it also leans into magenta a little bit more, which is actually something that I noticed in the highlights of the new fresh Gold 120. To be fair though, this Gold 100 is expired and may not be producing results that are consistent with when it was fresh. Anyway, back in reality, or what we perceive as reality, though it's truly a computer simulation akin to The Sims on some omnipotent alien being's sticky laptop, Caleb's camera sh** itself again. Uh, no thank you. Which will probably be a clip we end up using repeatedly for the years to come. But like a good film shooting friend, instead of comforting him by holding him gently and helping him diagnose the issue, I left Caleb's ass behind to chase down some decent light on old film that probably won't do it justice. Eventually I finished that roll and put in some more fresh new gold, so here's another comparison of the expired and unexpired. That's how it's done. When Kodak announced Gold in 120 earlier this year, they used the tagline, if you don't like it, we're just gonna give up. I'm just kidding, there was no tagline. They were just presenting it as a more economical way to shoot 120. I actually really like that Kodak is taking this approach and I gotta give them credit where it's due. Trying to find a more economical way to shoot 120 is something that's been plaguing the film community for a long time now. And it's nice that Kodak is at least trying to do their part. I just wish that they could keep up with demand and make it for large format. And f it, while I'm making a wish list that'll never be fulfilled, much less seen, bring back Ektachrome 16. Yeah, that was a pretty wild film stock. Jason, you gotta stop! Stop being so handsome? Okay. Shot it at 115. 
Anyway, as the sun was doing its Irish goodbye, I started wishing I had a little more ISO to work with in low light. Two hundred is fine, I guess. One hundred is kind of where I draw the line. Numerous random people who are probably making it up told me that gold is actually a true 160 ISO film stock. So do whatever you want with that info. If it changes your life in some major way, then you probably didn't have much going for you. I've actually seen some people push gold to 800 with varying amounts of success. So it seems pretty versatile for a more economical film stock. Anyway, before I wrap up the video, however, I'd like to quickly thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform that allows you to custom build your own website to the fullest capacity of your creativity. With hundreds of professionally designed templates at your disposal, getting started with a good foundation is easy. With Squarespace's intuitive user interface, you can simply add or subtract modules to design your own custom look that suits your creative vision. For this reason, I've been personally using Squarespace for several years to host my online photography portfolio. The ease of customization allows me to try out new arrangements and layouts for my work in a smooth and quick fashion. In fact, I was able to renovate my entire website in under two hours a couple of weeks ago. Plus, if you have questions or need help building your site, you can contact Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer support portal. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. In the end, what can I say about Kodak Gold and 120? It's fine. It's not really what I expected, but it can certainly deliver in the right conditions. I do personally enjoy it. I think it's a better film stock than Portra 400, just for my own needs, but I still don't think it's quite the same look as the 35 millimeter version, for whatever reason. The 35 millimeter version of gold oozes nice, warm tones, and the 120 version is a bit more neutrally balanced in my own findings. So again, like Mr. Krabs, I was a little bit disappointed there. Huh? It's just a little plastic treasure chest. Plastic! Aye, but it's based on a real treasure chest. <laughs> I kind of look at Kodak Gold 120 now as more or less off-brand Portra 400 in that it's cheaper, almost as neutral in color, and it's just one stop slower. Nearly the same thing. But overall, I think that we in the film community should be looking at the return of Kodak Gold in medium format as a good thing. After all, more choices, more problems. I mean, uh, more choices, the better. Like how Kodak didn't choose me to test this film stock early, which is fine, it doesn't bother me at all, and I barely ever bring it up to my therapist.